Hey, Corey here, Canadian RC guy. Well, if you can see behind me, we got that modified back on the table. It's time to do a whole bunch more setup and get this thing turning left a whole lot better. So welcome back. As you can see, it's modified time. Um, if you haven't already, two weeks ago, you should watch the first video in this series on the modified. Uh, we went through the first few things, uh, five things that you can do for setup. It's all free, easy peasy to do. You should probably watch that one first and then maybe move on to this one. Or when you're done this one, go back and watch that one. You'll probably enjoy it as well. So this week, if you can see on the table, we're going to be doing some shock oil. We're going to be cleaning out that diff and adding some stuff to uh, make it a little bit looser and a little bit freer spinning. Because it's, I don't know if you can see here, um, you spin the tire and it pretty much instantly stops. Because there's so much thick grease in that rear end um, and that transmission and that differential. So we're going to get that cleaned up. And uh, for us, we use sewing machine oil. Uh, it takes a little bit more upkeep if you want to say, you know, we change it out every few weeks just to make because it gets a little bit more dirty burn up But uh, it's free. It runs great and uh, you'll really see when we're done the difference of spinning this tire It's just gonna spin super free um, And we also have we grabbed out a few out of the bag. We got some different shocks to use. We got some blue shocks We've got some black shocks and somewhere around here. We've got pink shocks I think they're still in the bag over on the other side over there um, so we're going to be changing those up, obviously shock oil, and uh, this thing should turn a heck of a lot better. So give us a few minutes, we're going to get this body off, and we'll show you where we're going to start. <clears throat> so I'll uh, post a picture of this list here in the video, but what we're going to be doing, and this doesn't work for everyone, this is just what we're going to use for a setup. We may change things over time, um, for, but for shock oils, in our right front we're going to use 20 weight, in the right rear, we're going to use 30. In the left front, 20. And in the left rear, we're going to use 20 as well. And for springs, in our right front, we're going to put a black one in. In our right rear, we're going to use a pink one. In our left front, we're going to use pink. And then in our left rear, we're going to use blue. Um, and from one thing I've found from other people, that kind of thing's online. If uh, the car is too tight and you want to loosen it up, for the springs, you're going to use a black in the right front, pink in the right rear, and then stay to both blue in the uh, left front and the left rear. And then the main thing we're gonna be doing this thing is cleaning out that diff. Um, other than that, this thing should be pretty much ready to go. We might play with the camber a little bit in this video, um, but we'll see. So I guess the first thing we're gonna have to do is start ripping these shocks off. So we're just gonna go one at a time. They're pretty simple. Screw the top, screw the bottom. We'll get these things ripped out and then we'll go ahead. All right, so we've got the shock out. And if you can see here down the little collar, there's a little uh, hex bolt there that you've got to loosen up and get out. That way we can pull the sleeve off the bottom. So we'll go ahead and do that. It's pretty simple. And just set that out of the way so you don't lose it. Then you can pull up on your spring that little collar comes out of place. You can pull it off and set it to the side as well. And then you'll be able to pull your spring off. Set it off to the side. Then you're going to want to be able to take this top, top of the shock apart. So that way we can get inside. We'll drain all that, all that oil out. But before I do that, I'm just going to grab a little container so that we have something to dump it into. One second and I'll be right back. All right, so we're back. We grab our trusty Tim Hortons cup. Just something to drain all this old oil into and these caps can be pretty tough sometimes but we just take our screwdriver jammer through the hole here hold on and start twisting and that'll break that seal loose we're just going to get this cap off don't forget there is a seal on the inside there a nice little rubber seal you don't want to Grab that and set it to the side as well. Then you can just take all that old thick oil and just start dumping. So, you know, we usually sit here for a couple of minutes and just let her drip out and drip out. It's, it's pretty thick, so it takes a minute or two. Um, it's not a bad idea too to just kind of take your uh, shock there and just compress her in and out a couple of times. That'll help push that oil out, get a few more drips out. 
You can hear her kind of squishing and sucking dry. So we're just gonna do this for another couple of minutes, just sit here and let her drain. And then we'll come right back. You can almost hook it right onto the side of the cup there and let her drain. Well, that's not a bad idea. So we'll be back in a minute. So now that we're all drained out here, the next thing we're gonna do, just take a paper towel, just gently put it in there, clean out any of that old thick oil, get out as much as you can, because it definitely helps out. out of the way throw it out there for a second and we'll grab our seal just give her a wipe off set that aside because we're going to use that in a second so um, we're doing our left front so we're going to be using 20 weight traxxas oil um, we generally try and stay with traxxas made stuff i'm not sure if there's a seal inside of this i'll have to crack her open yeah there is right there get that out of the way um you know we sometimes we buy some stuff on amazon or the old scamazon here and there but uh we generally just go to our local traxxas dealer that's echelon hobbies in brighton um they're the ones that we buy all our stuff from if you're in our area you can go and visit them or if you're not just visit visit them online at echelonhobbies.ca they can send stuff to you anywhere you are um so we're just going to crack this lid off of here now we're just going to start filling this thing up. We're going to get about three quarters of the way full, maybe a little bit more than that. And then uh, we just take once again and just kind of compress the shock in and out. Try and work up any of them bubbles and get them out of there. If you have any bubbles in there, and that is just resistance. So we'll kind of spin it around every once in a while, you know. Push it out again, suck it back. Push it out again, suck it back. Get rid of a bunch of those, those bubbles and really suck it down in there if you need to. Add a little bit more oil once it gets down underneath. Same thing. Push her up, pull her down. Push all those bubbles to the top. I'm not sure if you can technically see any of those bubbles there when I'm doing this. I don't want to pour it over, but pull it up and you'll see all the bubbles getting pushed to the top. So we're just going to do this for a second here. Add a little bit more oil, let those bubbles break apart. The, uh, the thinner the oil, the faster they come to the top, the thicker the oil, obviously the longer it takes. Just about to the full there. We'll just move this a little bit. We're not quite moving it to the top now. We're just pushing it up and down just a little bit. That's just getting the last of them little bubbles to come to the surface. And, uh, and when you're filling it, the oil will kind of concave in a little bit. So you're just kind of getting the oil to the top edge. A few more drops to the top edge of that where it's level and you'll see it kind of concave in a little bit and that's gonna leave room to put this seal. So then once again, we're just gonna place this seal on, make sure it's in there and get our cap back on. You may see a little bit of oil spread out. So if that's okay, you can clean that up. Get that twisted back all on there nice and tight. Once again, if you need to, just grab your screwdriver, shove her through, get her on there nice and tight. And we'll get this shock collar spun down out of the way. That way we can clean up any of this oil that's spilled out. And then one other thing that we like to do is just take a little one drop of oil, put it on this shaft here, kind of Work your shaft in and out. Just make sure it's got good lubrication. That's all. Make sure it's not dirty. In and out, in and out. I don't feel any resistance. 
You can see it's coming out really nice all the way extended here. That is a... I'm going to have to pull that cap off and put a little bit more inside. It doesn't quite come all the way back out. So give us one second. We're going to crack this off again, top it up just a little bit, and then we'll be right back. All right, so there we go. I don't think we had the shock. Oh. All right, so there we go. I don't think we had the shock all the way down there when we were filling it. But now we fill her up. She presses herself all the way down nicely. No resistance, no nothing. You can feel it. It feels pretty darn good. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to do this to the rest. Actually, I guess we should show you what spring we're putting onto this thing. So when they're doing our left front, we're going to be putting it on a pink spring. Um, pink spring. Traxxas springs, they just all have a little line there. Sorry, have a little line there. Show you what color they are. So we're just going to be sliding that on. We're probably going to have to slide our call away all the way up to the top here get that spring on then we're going to place this cap back on so pull your spring up there's just that little slot there so slap back on pop your spring back down and then you're going to put this little nut or this little hex bolt back all the way through and Put it back through the right side would probably be a good idea. And there we go. Tighten her up. And we are on. Pink spring. Nice shock oil. That should really... A little bit of looser shock oil. So we're going to go ahead. We'll get this one back on. We're going to do the other three. Um, so just remember, in our right front, we're going to do 20 weight as well. And in our left rear, we're going to do 20 weight. And then in our right rear, we're going to do 30 weight oil that we have here. And then for springs, in our right front, we're going to be changing it up to a black. Our right rear, which we're going to be another pink spring. And then our left rear, we're going to stay with the stock blue spring. But I think we're going to put in a full-size spring instead of the little short one that comes with it. Um, so after that, we'll get that all done. Let everything drip away in our good old Tim Hortons cup. We'll bring it back when all our shocks are on place. Or back in place, I guess I should say. So we're back. Shocks are all done. We put the front on. The back we left off just because we're going to be ripping that thing apart so we can get into that transmission and differential and get that thing all cleared out. Uh, so the first couple of things to do, you're going to unplug your battery terminals here. Get them out of the way. You can push them through the a little hole here in your in your body sport body mount and then there's two screws here we'll be taking those ones out and they're just a two millimeter hex screw then on the bottom you've got two here and you've got four here that we're going to be taking out Then I imagine, yeah, probably a two and a half here. I don't have all my don't have all my bits in the right place. A little bit too big. A little bit too small. There we go. Yeah, two point five. Got those out of the way. And then your whole back end will just come and slide right off. We'll get this out of the way for the moment. So here you go. This is what you're going to be left with. So the first thing we're going to do, we'll get this bumper off and out of the way. A couple of screws on either side. Same with your two and a half. Oh, actually, sorry. I'm a fool. It's going to be just the two. I'm taking the uh, the screw adjustment ones off. 
There we go. And there we go. So we're just gonna stick them back in the bumper here, just in the holes. Just so that way we don't have a pile of screws sitting all over the place. We'll set that aside. Next, we're gonna grab our wrench and we'll get these tires out of the way. Which is probably in a drawer over here somewhere. There we go. Set those aside. Neighbors are cutting grass out there. You can hear a little bit of that. Sorry. It's not a whole lot I can do about that. So then the next thing we're going to do, we can take off this shock or the, uh, the mount. Actually, looks like everything's pretty well held to it. Like I said, this is new, so uh, new to me, <laughs> new to you. We'll get rid of this, uh, we'll get rid of the cover first, I guess, and get the motor out of the way. Set those screws aside. Now you can really get a good nice look at the new motor mount or the, the metal motor mount I should say that they've put in with all these cars and all the heavy duty suspension and blocks. It's uh, quite a difference and it works really well so far. We haven't had any, uh, any issues at all. So the next thing we'll do, let's see here. Can we get that tower off? We can, but then we're gonna be taking out the links there as well, which I don't believe we necessarily need to do right away. So I guess we'll we'll get this motor out of the way first. Set those aside with the motor. Trying to keep everything nice and neat and tidy over there. And I guess uh, the next thing we'll do, we'll get these bottom arms attached or taken off. It's a two and a half as well. I think one of these days I should invest in a nice little, you know, battery powered drill for all these screws and stuff. So if there's anything uh, that you guys use, definitely drop it down there in the comments and let me know. That out of the way. I always put the screws back in. That way you know which way they came out. Back in. So we know where it came out of. <coughs> Next thing we can do on your axles. Hopefully you can see there, there's little pins in there. We're gonna knock those pins out. And that's gonna let us take this axle out. Give me just a second, we'll figure out what size we're at. There we go. Ours is just a little T6 is what it is, what it's called. But it's a very small, tiny one, that's for sure. Get that in there. Yeah, so right at the end of the axle, there's just that little hex bolt that you'll be able to unscrew. And then it's gonna come up. Hopefully you can see there, it's, hold it in between my fingers. It's uh, threads on one side and then pin on the other side. And that way you should be able to pull that right off. And we're just gonna take this pin Slide it right back inside and we'll screw it in. Guess we didn't have to make a mark if we do this. 
and that way we don't lose it. Do the same thing to the other side. Pin around here to the bottom. There we go. Pin is out, axle's off, and we'll just place it back in the same way it came out. We'll screw her in a bit. So then the next thing we're gonna do is take off this shock tower. There's two little screws. Hopefully you can see them. Two little screws here. And that's gonna take this shock tower off for us. I believe it should be a two millimeter. Um, something someone, a couple of people had mentioned in the comments before about trimming the body and about uh, raising the body up. And we did raise it up but it would still seem to be rubbing a little bit. So we may have to just raise it up so that it's just the one screw hole in the top there. And that should probably help out a lot. We probably didn't need to raise the body, but uh, we are gonna purchase ourselves one of the clear bodies, give it a nice wrap job. And uh, at least we know with that one, we won't have to do any trimming. Well, not any, you know, trimming after the first. I assume they come untrimmed and we'll have to make them fit ourselves. So we'll get those out of the way, and then you can get down in there to those two screws. That's going to get that tower out of the way. And there we go. Same thing, we're just going to pop those screws back into place so we know where they're from. Slide this out of the way. And there we are. We're left down to just the transmission. So the next thing we're going to be doing, getting rid of this slipper clutch so we can get this plate off. Then we can crack this transmission in half. Always a bit of a pain to get those nuts off, I find. So we're just going to set it aside on the table the way we took it off. Nut, spring... And everything comes off just like that. Easy peasy. And there's going to be a little pin in there. Just make sure you kick it off to the side and set it there so that way you don't lose it. Then we'll be able to take this orange plate off. There's just three screws right there. And after that, we're just going to take a break for a second. Get our table cleaned up. Uh, it's getting pretty dirty now from pulling this thing apart. Then we'll be back to get this thing split apart, pulled apart, and cleaned up. And spinning so much more free. Three screws, just like that. And I believe, oh, sorry, four screws. There's one more right there. Guess that's why I wear glasses. Not a... My vision's not always perfect. <laughs> there we go. And plate will come off. Same thing. We're just going to take the screws and put them back in the holes and set the plate off to the side. That way we know what the screws are for. And know exactly where they go. Just like that. So there. We're just going to clean the table up. But then the next thing we're going to be doing is there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... There's eight screws in this side of the, and there's four in the bottom to be able to take this plate out. We're gonna be able to pop this thing apart. So give us a minute, we're gonna get cleaned up and we'll be right back. Sorry, we lost the video splitting the transmission apart. We are gonna put out a full video again 
of doing a transmission, just a video of doing that, not all the other bits and parts. So uh, keep an eye out for that if there's anything you need. Sorry guys. So we got the halves all cleaned out and washed out, set them aside to dry for a little bit. Now we're just gonna set them aside back here. We'll use those again in a few minutes. Um, so the next thing you're gonna need, or at least what we use, we just have a big old soup can here and a can of brake clean. And we're gonna take this, this pin, this gear here, we're gonna pop the two bearings out of this gear here. And we're gonna clean everything up with brake clean, get everything nice and clean. You can just pop them out from one side to the other. We'll clean those up with our rag and paper towel in a minute. We'll get everything nice and clean. All the grease that you can get off of here, the better. Take our paper towel, start cleaning them off. Um, one thing I like to do is just take a good old Q-tip, spray her off with a bit of brake clean, and it can really let you get inside those grooves and get some of that grease just pulled out of there. Helps out a ton. So we're just gonna go ahead for a minute. We'll clean these things up, get the bearings put back in, and then we'll move on to this differential. Get it all pulled apart and cleaned up. All right, so now that we got all that stuff cleaned up and set aside, nice, whoop, roll the right off. Nice clean paper towel. We're gonna pick that stuff up and we'll get it over here with the slipper clutch and out of the way. And this is our one other bearing from our uh, slipper clutch. So next thing we're gonna concentrate is on this thing. Um, if you hold it, it does not spin freely at all. We're going to uh, pull this thing apart and give it a bit of an upgrade. So, if you grab a little screwdriver, you'll be able to kind of gently get in behind these bearings, I'm assuming, and push them forward. That would be my thought. There we go. Pop that thing off and set her aside. Same thing on the other side. still there we go pop it right off we'll set that to the side we got two little or sorry we got four little screws in this side are they two millimeter or are they the small i think they're the small ones again oh now my fingers are all greasy get that off of there get this one on it's probably like a little 0.5 of some sort yeah so we'll get those four screws out Set them aside. All right, so we've got those out and set aside. Now you should be able to just kind of push on it, gear part at the bottom, give it a little snug push, and it's gonna pop itself right apart. Be careful with all your gears. Make sure you keep everything in place, pop it apart. There's a seal there you're gonna have to pay attention to as well. Set everything aside and pot those plants. You can see how thick that grease is. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. We're gonna fix that. We'll set that aside. So, you're gonna wanna grab that seal, set her off to the side, we'll clean her. And once again, you can see how thick that grease is. So we're gonna get that grease all cleaned up and cleaned out of there. On this side here, you're gonna be able to take these gears, you're gonna to wanna to put them all back into the same place. That's gonna be the, the goal, I guess, here. Um, so I'm not sure if there's a common place to pick, but we'll just use our screwdriver here. See if we can get this pop back up. Get out of there. Oh. So we'll set that at the top so we know it's our top one. We'll set this one at the bottom so we know it's our bottom one. I don't see any shims or anything in there that we have to worry about. Just a whole lot of goopy, goopy grease. So we're going to take a few minutes. We're going to get this all cleaned out. Get the gears and stuff cleaned off. Bearings cleaned out. And then we'll go through putting it all back together. Pretty simple process. 
So we're waiting for the other gears to, to uh, sit in the brake clean there and clean up a little bit. We pulled the gears out. So on this back one plate here, you can just pop it through, gear comes out, there is, make sure you pay attention, a little blue shim on the bottom. So you'll need to pay attention to that, make sure it goes back in place. And same thing with this one here, pull her apart, gear comes right out if you push on it nicely. And there's a little blue shim as well, so make sure you pay attention to that. So we're going to do the same thing, we're going to pull these shims off, get everything cleaned up, cleaned out, and we'll bring you back in a few minutes when we're getting this stuff all put back together. All right, so here we go. Everything's all cleaned up, all in a nice clean paper towel. We're ready to start putting this stuff back together. So don't forget, on your, your gears, you're gonna have these little blue rubber shims, I guess you wanna call them. Make sure those go back on. And then you'll be able to drop your gears right in place. Drop them right down in there. Nice and easy. They're going to spin nice and free now, that's for sure, compared to uh, what they were before with the whole that almost like honey inside of them. So they're going to sit down in there nice and easy. Then you're going to be able to take your little gears, plop them back on. One's for the top, remember, and the one for the bottom. So they've got little slits in them, so that way when you set them down in, they can sit over, uh, here I'll pull these off so I can show you. Got little slits in them, so that way when they sit in place, they kind of lock in place like that, like an X. Nice and easy. Oh, so take these gears, place them back in here, face your gears inside. And then... You can see that one set of holes is, no, I guess it's not necessarily lower than the other. Give me a second here and we'll, we'll have to drop them in place and find out. Drop those gears in there. Nope, so we're going to be doing this one first. So there we go. Drop that set of gears in there first. Get that bar spun around so it's nice and flat so that the other one can sit right in place. Then you're going to be able to drop this one right down on top. Make sure that they're interlocking. Easy peasy, just like that. When you're spinning it now, nice and free. Give her a spin. Make sure that everything is nice and loose. Do what it's supposed to do. You don't hear any grinding or anything along those lines. So we'll set that aside for a second. Next thing we'll do, make sure you take this blue seal here. Get it back on in place. I believe it will fit pretty much anyway. Yeah, just like that, no problem. And actually, I'm wondering if that seal, second guessing myself, wonder if, the, yeah, just like that. So it's probably easier if you place that seal on the inside here, just take your screwdriver and get her down there all the way around the inside. Got a bumblebee flying around us in here. Get out of here. Get back out that door. There we go. So get that seal back in place. See if we can find something to hold this. I guess we can probably lean it on its side. Get this gear back in place. Then what we're gonna do, what we use to uh, replace that horrible, horrible thick honey grease on the inside as we use Singer sewing machine oil. It is super thin, super free. Um, we do a little bit more maintenance on it just to clean it out every more once in a while, you know, after a, I don't know, a 10 runs or so, nothing big just to check and make sure. It's got a little bit of dirt in it. You can tell that it's a little bit worn, it's got a little bit darker. We just dump her out and fill her back up again. But we find with this, those tires are gonna spin so free and so loose, it's wonderful. We use it on our bearings, we use it on pretty much everything. We enjoy it a lot. There's lots of other things out there. I'm sure there's things you guys use, obviously. If there's something you think that might be better for us, drop it down there in the comments. We'll try just about anything. But this is what we started using, and we've really enjoyed it in our other cars, so we're going to continue to use it in this. So basically, all we're going to do is coat all these gears. We're going to fill it up 
maybe a quarter full. You don't need to like fill it all the way up to the top or anything like that. When it's on side, these gears are spinning and all that oil is just gonna be going all over the place. So, you know, just take a few drops, spin it on all those gears, get it on the rods, you know, and just kind of fill up the bottom so there's oil in there. Hopefully you can see here on the camera. I'll uh, make sure the light's turned over nice for you. And just a little bit of grease there on the bottom. Nice and easy. Then you'll be able to take this gear, or sorry, the top cover, place her back in there, make sure it meshes nicely. Before you do any screws or anything, give this thing a spin. You know, hold on to her. If you can here with your fingers, give her a spin. You can see that now it's actually spinning. Nice and free, nice and easy. So when you're putting these screws in, just put them in nice and snug. No need to tighten them down. Uh, you're just gonna lock up this differential. So one thing I do suggest once you get them all in there, snug them down, and then we're gonna give it a couple little spins and make sure that it's still spinning nice and free. So there we go, got them all nice and snug. Same thing as before, grab on, see if you can spin it. And you can see it's, it's kind of tight. It's not really wanting to spin now. So we're gonna go, you know, just a eighth of a turn at a time and just loosen these up a little bit. Just a hair each one. We're gonna push down. Make sure it's got the space in there. Grab on again, start spinning. It's a little bit freer, but I think we can do better. Just another little eighth of a turn. Same thing, push down, grab on and spin. We're getting there. Think another turn. Another eighth of a turn, maybe even one more after that. Grab on again. There we go. That's spinning pretty darn free. I think we'll try one more though, just to be safe. If we have to, we can always tighten it back up. Push down right there, make sure she's separated. Yeah, there we go. That's spinning nice and free now. Way better than it was out of the box. So you can take these bearings, get them pressed back in place. They are a little tough, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, actually, we're such silly fools. Get that screwdriver and get that back off of there. So the one thing we're gonna do is just take a little bit of our Singer oil, just drop it on either side of where that bearing goes, just to lube it up, give it some nice free moving, pop that bearing back into place. And there we go. They just snap back in place. You've got yourself a nice free spinning differential. So now I guess it's time to get this transmission all put back together. All right, so next step, we're gonna take this uh, bearing, take a tiny little bit of our oil here, get her in there so the bearing spins nice and free, and just press her back in the side. That's gonna allow the small one to go back in place. And before we do that, we'll take a little bit of oil, just put it on the end of that shaft, and just drop her back in there. That way, you can see it's spinning nice and free. Then you'll be able to take this metal gear. We're gonna put the two bearings back in either side. We'll take a little bit of our oil, pop her on the inside, press that bearing back in. Same thing on the other side. Just enough to keep her lubed and free moving. And we'll pop that bearing back inside. Well, that one just popped right out on us. 
as we push the other one in. Oh, there we go. Pop both the bearings back inside. You're gonna have this little metal bar, plop it back inside, take your gear, make sure it meshes up, slide it back inside. So once again, give it a spin, make sure that it's nice and free. And you can always take a little bit of your oil as well. We're gonna drop it inside on these gears just to keep it nice and lubed up in. <clears throat> all right, so now that we've got those two gears in, all lubed up, they're spinning nice and free. It's time to get this other half put back together. And it's pretty simple. Just that little bearing is gonna go in here, just like that. Then you're gonna be able to take your differential. It's gonna slide in there, more or less all the way up to the top, I do believe. Oh, we dropped her. Slide her in there. We're gonna hold her with our finger. We're gonna take a little bit of oil to both of the bearings. Get her spun in there. Same thing. Just a little bit of oil along this gear just to keep everything nice and lubed and running free. Then you'll be able to take this half. Oh! Held it a little too far. You'll be able to take the two halves kind of going to have to lean them together here. Oh, I'm 100% upside down. There we go. You're kind of going to be able to lean them together a little bit. Place everything in, in line. Just like that. Everything's going to clip back together. Don't lose your differential out of the bottom. Now that that's there, you'll be able to take it out Gives you a little bit of, little bit of access, as you can see, to your gears. So you can lube everything up, keep everything nice and free. So before we put our plate on, we're going to spin everything. Make sure everything spins nice and free. Then you can grab your plate here. It's going to go back in place. I do believe it should. Oh, sorry, it should only fit one way. Drop that back in there. Once again, we're gonna spin it. Make sure it's spinning freely. Then you'll be able to take your four little screws, place them in the bottom, holding your tight, your case tight. Like so, we'll get those all snugged in there. Oh, I do believe it's gonna be the, uh, get the proper size end on would be nice, the two millimeter. Holding your transmission tight. We're just gonna snug those up. We're not gonna tighten them up quite yet. So there we go, just snugged up. We're just gonna kick this door open now that they're done cutting grass out there. Give us a little bit more air here inside this shop. So then we're gonna take and place our eight screws back in, starting from where we started. Oh, proper side here. Starting from where we ended off. We we started here, but we only ended off here. So we're just gonna work our way back around with the way we line the screws up. We'll just place them in here. And there we go, all of our screws in place. We're just gonna snug all of these up.
All right, so once again, got everything snug down and just double check, make sure that everything is spinning nice and free. Nothing's binded up. So we're just gonna continue on, get everything tightened down, spinning as we go, just to make sure we don't have anything binding up. We wanna keep this transmission and differential spinning freely. Snugged up the bottoms. Once again, just checking. We'll spin her, make sure it's free. And we're just gonna go around one at a time, tightening and spinning. So there we go, all tightened up and still spinning free. Now that it's all spinning freely, We'll take this our uh, motor plate, get it back on in place here. We'll take our four screws, get them tightened up. There we go. Once again, just be on the safe side. Give yourself a good spin. Make sure everything's still free. So then we can go ahead, take that slipper clutch, and we're going to put it back together the way we took it out. So first thing you're going to need to do, take that little pin, kind of turn it sideways, so that way you can slide that little pin in here. Sorry, trying to do it so you guys can see. It's not always the easiest. Get that little pin in. Have your drive, have it centered there. So that way the pin stays in place. Be able to take your plate. Hopefully you can see here, it's got that little slit. Oh, so you'll be able to slide it right on in place. Metal plate on top. Take your gear, get her down in place. Spring is next. Then goes your little nut. Just hold on to your gear. Then I'll let you screw that in. We're just gonna screw it in a little bit. We, uh. Once we get everything back in the car, we're gonna go through and play with this a little bit. So once it's all put together, time to get that motor back in place. So the one thing you're gonna to need to do, make sure that little plate there, the alignment plate, is lined up with your holes, so that way, obviously, you can get your little screws in. So we're just gonna slide it in from the back here. And it'll only fit one way. You can just slide it in. Just gonna adjust it with our light there. Then be able to take these little silver screws. And we're gonna plop them back in the hole. The mesh should be set up. That's what that little plate is for. So you should have no issue that way. Then we're just gonna screw these in nice and snug. No need to over tighten anything. There we go. Once again, Spin it, make sure that it is, uh, get that out of the way, spinning nice and free. A little wobbly until we tighten up that bolt. All right, so now, I guess, get our mess cleaned up here. So we're just gonna do everything in reverse. Put on our shock mount, put our body mount back on, put our bumper back on, get everything put back on the car pretty simple process so give us a few minutes once we're all done we'll get this thing back up on the table up in the sand we'll show you how free this rear end is compared to before so here we have it all back together we left it so we can just yank the body off here and get it out of the way and uh we just want to be able to show you how free this rear end is now i mean if you can remember before these tires would just barely spin when we spun it and now you can just grab onto those tires and this thing is just spinning free as a bird anymore. Um, so that's gonna make a lot of difference out there on that track. So just give me a second. We're gonna flip this camera around and I'm gonna show you what we're doing on next week's video. So there we go, all back together. This week, we're not gonna take it out to the back track. Um, this video has been pretty long and I obviously 
I want to thank everyone for watching. Um, hopefully, we learned a few things. Hopefully, you guys did too. Uh, so next week, we'll take it out on the track, turn it for a handful of laps, and see how this thing is. And maybe in that video, or the video after, we went and grabbed ourselves a new set of uh, back tires, a new set of rear tires. So that way, we can probably take one of those and put it on the front. Different offset, that kind of thing. So it should really help a little bit if we're not already turning great left. We went out and got ourselves from Losi. We got one of their camber and tow kits or uh, adjustment tools. So that way we can play with our toe and camber and see how this thing is sitting and adjust it a little bit. And then we might even go and grab out our little buckets of gears and spur gears, all that kind of stuff. And uh, see if we can speed this thing up or probably in our case, slow it down a little bit. So as always, thanks so much for watching. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button down below so you get all the new videos coming up. Head back and watch the rest of the videos with this modified or any of the other things that we've got. Helps us out a ton. Comments for this car, drop them down in the comments. We're always open to anything that you guys are doing that you found that it's helped out. And if you could, give us a big thumbs up. Helps us with the old YouTube algorithm. So thanks so much. We'll see you again next week. We'll be turning more laps with this thing.